Hi, I'm John Cresswell, and today I'm going to go through a first look at the new Gen 2's Sig Cross rifle. The Sig Cross is a magazine fed bolt action precision rifle that's available in 6.5 Creedmoor, 277 Sig Fury, and 308 Winchester. This is a serious rifle. It's been designed and manufactured with input from hunters, snipers, and competitive long range shooters. This video can be used as a user guide that you can refer back to time and time again. Safety. Before we do anything with a SIG cross, we need to prove that it's clear. We check to see that the magazine is empty, so no rounds in the magazine. Ensure the bolt is to the rear of the rifle, and we visually check inside the chamber inside the body and the magazine well to make sure there are no live cartridges present. Rack the bolt forwards, point the rifle in a safe direction, safety off, fire off the action, bolt to the rear, safety on. The SIG cross is now safe to work on. Whenever you're passing the rifle to someone else, you should always unload the rifle and prove the chamber is clear by allowing them to inspect inside the chamber before you hand it over. Always pass the rifle with the bolt to the rear and the safety on safe. Let's take a look at the controls of the SIG Cross rifle. On the right hand side, we've got quick detach reversible sling cap, a comb clamp lever, a length of pull knob, and a butt pad button with butt pad cant screws just inside. The stop lock button. This is used for folding and unfolding the stock. You've got an ambidextrous AR style safety selector, rotating either selector on either side, 90 degrees changes the fire mode from safe to fire. There is an enlarged bolt knob, a two stage match trigger, ejection port, and then down the end of the barrel, you've got a taper cap and a thread protector. Looking at the controls on the left hand side, you've got a 15 inch M-lock handguard. Along the top, you've got a mill standard 1913 rail for fitting accessories such as scope rings, scopes, etc. You've got at the ambidextrous AR style safety catch and inside the trigger guard is the magazine release lever. The precision style stock gives the shooter all the adjustments that they might need. The rifle has a one piece receiver for increased accuracy. Sig Cross is currently available in 6.5 Creedmoor, 277 Sig Fury and 308. Let's look at the specifications of this rifle. This rifle that I have in my hands, this is chambered in 6.5mm Creedmoor. It has an 18 inch, which is 457 millimeter stainless steel barrel. It's got a one in eight twist, five groove right hand twist. On the end, the thread protector. The end of the barrel has a five eight inch at 24 teeth per inch thread. So this rifle is a bolt action rifle and it comes with one five round AICS magazine. Uh, this is quite cool because it's got an orange follower in there so you can see quite clearly when your magazines are empty. The trigger is a two stage match trigger and that's a fully adjustable from two to four pounds. The forend is an aluminium free float M-lock forend. You could add arca rails, you can add other attachments onto the forend. Polymer AR style Sig Sauer grip. The receiver finish is anodized in black. The overall length with the stock extended is 36.5 inches. And with the stock folded, it reduces right down to 27.5 inches. The overall width of the rifle is 2.9 inches and it's eight inches in height. Unloaded, the SIG Cross with no magazine, sights, other accessories weighs 6.8 pounds, making it one of the lightest rifles in its class. 
operating the SIG Cross Rifle. Before using the SIG Cross Rifle, you should ensure that you've read and understand and are capable of following all the safety warnings within the manual that this comes with. Yes, read the manual. I think I say that in every one of my reviews, but please do, it's really important. Get to know your rifle before you go to the range. Don't mean take it out for drinks or pizza. What I mean is field strip the rifle, clean any fouling that might have occurred during factory testing, and then inspect, lubricate, and reassemble your firearm. Upon reassembly and prior to firing the rifle, make sure you conduct a function check to make sure that your rifle is operating correctly. Primary cocking takes place as the bolt handle is raised. A cam at the rear of the rotating bolt carrier forces the striker assembly rearward, compressing the main spring. A notch at the rear of the bolt carrier holds the striker assembly in the cock position until the bolt handle is pushed downward during the locking function. Feeding begins with the bolt in its rearmost position and a loaded magazine inserted into the magazine well. As the user pushes the bolt forward, the cartridge is guided by the magazine feed lips and the feed ramp so that the cartridge is directed into the chamber. As you push the bolt forward, the cartridge is pushed clear of the magazine feed lips. The forward travel of the bolt pushes the cartridge the rest of the way into the chamber. Locking. Rotating the bolt handle downward causes the locking lugs on the bolt head to engage the lugs of the barrel extension. The cartridge is now seated in the bolt head assembly, compressing the ejector, while the extractor engages the rim of the cartridge. The sear engages and locks the striker assembly in the cock position. The cross firearm is now ready for firing. Firing. With the bolt locked and the safety selector lever disengaged, the cross can be fired by pressing the trigger. Pressing the trigger rearward rotates the trigger bar releasing the sear. The sear is cammed down by the pressure from the main spring loaded striker assembly. The striker assembly is driven forward under spring tension to strike the primer of the cartridge loaded in the chamber, firing the cartridge. Unlocking. Raising the bolt handle unseats the locking lugs on the bolt head from the lugs in the barrel extension, allowing the bolt to be pulled to the rear. Extraction. Primary extraction occurs simultaneously with unlocking. The rim of the cartridge case is gripped by the extractor. During the final upward rotation of the bolt handle, the primary extraction cam partially retracts the bolt assembly, completing the primary function of extraction. Secondary extraction. The bolt lugs are now free of the lugs in the barrel extension, and the bolt can now be pulled to the rear, completing the secondary function of extraction. Ejection. The spring-loaded ejector is applying constant pressure to the left side of the cartridge head. As the bolt is pulled to the rear, the front edge of the cartridge reaches the ejection port on the right side of the receiver. Pressure exerted by the ejector and the pulling effect of the extractor on the right side of the cartridge case head causes the cartridge to be rotated and ejected out through the port. Rearward movement of the bolt is halted by the bolt catch. To make adjustments to your SIG Cross Rifle, you will need the following tools. A torque driver capable of torquing to 50 inch pounds, a T15 bit and a T15 wrench, T25 bit, a T30 bit and a 1 16th pin punch. Adjusting the comb height. To adjust the comb height, take up a shooting position behind the rifle. Press the comb height clamp lock and swing the comb clamp lever down. Adjust the comb to the desired height and hold in place with your cheek while swinging the comb clamp lever up until it's captured by the comb clamp lock. Adjusting the length of pull. Loosen the length of pull knob by rotating anti-clockwise several complete turns. Adjust the butt pad position and then tighten the length of pull knob by rotating clockwise until it's hand tight. Do not use tools to tighten the knob. Adjusting the butt pad height. Press and hold the butt pad button and adjust the butt pad height to the desired position and then release the butt pad button. When you've released the button, ensure that it engages the locking recess so that it does not move vertically.
you will hear a click. To adjust the butt pad cant, firstly, we need to increase the length of pull. So loosen the length of pull knob, extend the butt, tighten the length of pull knob, and we stand the rifle up, then using our T25 bit, we loosen the cant screws, and then you can adjust the cant of the butt pad. Once you've adjusted the butt pad cant to how you want it, tighten both butt pad cant screws to 12.5 inch pounds. Don't forget to reset your length of pull. Let's look at reversing the stock fold direction. So at the moment, our stock folds to the right hand side of the rifle. For the stock to fold, the bolt must be forward and down. So what we're gonna look at doing is changing the fold direction so that the stock folds onto the left hand side of the rifle. So we're going to need a torque wrench driver and we're gonna to need to set it to 50 inch pounds. and we're gonna need a T30 bit. To get to the bolts, we need to fold the stock. And then we will be able to see in the back, you've got the plates with the two bolts. Do not rotate or flip this stock hinge assembly when reversing the folding direction. Use your T30 bit to remove the stock hinge screw and the stock hinge assembly from the receiver. Then we need to remove the other bolt from the stock. <clears throat> we don't want to rotate this, we want it to fold onto the other side. So we're gonna move the stock from this side to that side. So we line up the holes, we get the bolt, put that in. And we just screw this in to 50 inch pounds. There we go, so that's clicked. And we then align the stock hinge to the rifle and we replace the bolt and then we do that up with the driver. And we do that until we get to 50. So now the stock folds on the other side of the rifle. So when unfolding, we press the lock button and the stock folds round but if you notice, the clip is now on the other side, so we need to push down instead of pulling up when we're folding the stock. So we press the button, push down, and then we can fold the stock. Great thing about that, you can have the bolt open and you can have your flag in, so you can still have the SIG all folded up, but you can have your bolt open. Perhaps you don't want your quick detach sling point on the right hand side of your rifle. You might prefer it on the other. Let's have a look at reversing the quick detach sling point. 
on the left hand side of the rifle there is a bolt so you will need a t25 bit and your torque driver you need to set your torque driver to 35 inch pounds so we remove the bolt and the QD sling, and inside there is a washer, or washer out. And then all we do is we swap it round. So we get the QD sling cup, put that in on the other side, add the washer, add the bolt, and then tighten it up to 35 inch pounds. That's your QD sling swivel, change side. Adjusting the trigger. The Sig Sauer Cross Rifle has a single T15 screw for trigger pull adjustment that can be adjusted between 2.5 and four pounds approximately without disassembling the rifle. And it's accessible through an opening in the trigger guard. You'll need a T15 tool. You place that through the hole into the bolt, by turning the screw clockwise, the trigger pull will decrease. Likewise, turning the screw anti-clockwise will increase the trigger pull. So if we wanted to set this trigger pull nice and light, we turn it around all the way until it stops. The adjustment screw will stop at the maximum and minimum available trigger pull weights. So I've now set this rifle to its lightest trigger pull weight. If you wanted to change your bolt knob, you can change it from a small bolt knob to a larger bolt knob. You just need a T25 drive and you unscrew the small bolt in the middle of the bolt knob. I find it easier to push the bolt forward and lock it. And then use your T25 bit and just unscrew the bolt knob. Once you've got it lit loose, you can just use your hands and remove the bolt knob. Then you get your oversized bolt knob and replace that. There are no torque settings in the manual for this, but I'd recommend just doing it hand tight. And that's your bolt knob replaced. What we're going to do now is we're going to field strip the SIG Cross rifle. So before we do anything, we need to unload and clear the firearm of all ammunition and ensure the safety selector is on safe. Open the stock, bolt to the rear, and we're going to check inside the chamber, physically check in there as well. Nothing within the body of the rifle and there is no magazine fitted. So we know that this rifle is clear and the safety selector is on safe. If the stock is set up for right hand fold, you need to move the bolt forward, press the stop lock button, lift the stock and fold it halfway. Then press the bolt release button and slide the bolt out towards the rear of the rifle. Disassembling the bolt assembly. So to start with, we need to decock the striker. So grip the bolt and then twist to decock the striker. You'll now notice it is decocked. So holding the bolt face against the table, you don't need to press down hard. Press on the striker shroud and then remove the bolt handle partly. Once you've done that, you should be able to then pull out the striker assembly, remove the bolt handle. We have the bolt head assembly pin. 
that will pretty much just fall out. And then you can remove the bolt head assembly as well. Just note which way round the bolt head assembly goes in. It should only fit one way. See, only fit in one way. So that is the bolt assembly stripped down as far as we are authorized to strip it down. So no further stripping of the striker assembly is allowed. The bolt assembly consists of the bolt carrier, the bolt handle, the bolt head pin, the bolt head assembly, and the striker assembly. We've got the three locking lugs, we've got the ejector, we've got the firing pin hole, and we've got the extractor. So to strip the magazine, we press the button in, in the middle of the floor plates, and then slide the floor plates out. We can then remove the internals. So you've got the follower, the magazine spring, and the floor plate. Cleaning and maintenance. Always ensure your rifle is unloaded and clear before you clean or work on it. Make sure you use products that are specifically designed for use on firearms to avoid any damage. I use Bortec products on all my firearms. Do not use a wire brush on a receiver or any other aluminium surfaces as this will scratch and damage the finish. Cleaning the bolt assembly. Scrub the bolt face with a nylon bristle brush and Friction Guard XP gun oil, then wipe off any excess with a cloth. Clean the hook of the extractor and remove any carbon from the bolt lugs. Scrub the bolt head with nylon bristle brush and Friction Guard XP gun oil, wipe off the excess with a cloth. Clean the exterior of the bolt carrier, wipe down the bolt handle. Scrub the bolt head pin with a nylon bristle brush and then wipe off any excess. Wipe down the striker assembly. Lubricating the bolt assembly. So firstly, we apply a drop of oil to the extractor. And then we wipe off any excess. Next, we need to apply a small amount of grease to the side walls of the bolt latch pin groove on the top of the bolt carrier. So I've got some extreme grease here. Bit of my finger. And just tease that into the grooves. and then a light coat of lubricant to the exterior of the bolt carrier. Just a drop, and then just rub that with a finger. The bolt handle, so again, I've just got some on my finger. bolt head pin I don't have any with me but apply a light coat of molly disulfide based anti-seize lubricant to the striker blade itself and then spread two to three drops of lubricant along the striker spring so again just put a little bit on my finger and then rub that along the length of the striker spring And then we apply a small amount of grease to the large diameter of the front of the striker pin. We also want to add a small amount of grease to the cocking cam at the back of the bolt carrier. Scrub the interior of the receiver with a soft bristle brush and Friction Guard XP gun oil. Wipe off any excess oil. And then wipe down all exterior surfaces of the firearm. Lubrication of the receiver and exterior of the firearm. 
apply a light coat of lubricant to the exterior of the receiver where the bolt assembly moves. Apply one or two drops of lubricant to the magazine release spring and the stock hinge. Do not lubricate moving parts of the stock, comb or butt pad as this will attract dust or grit. Cleaning the magazine. Remove any dirt or dust or debris with a rag or a dry nylon bristle brush. So just get right inside the magazine, under the feed lips, and just get any dirt or dust out. This is relatively clean. Brush it all off. And there you go. Do not use any lubricant, solvent or metal bristle brushes when cleaning the magazine. To reassemble the magazine, we place the follower and the spring assembly back into the base of the magazine. And then slide on the foot plate and that is your magazine back together. Now that we've cleaned our bolt assembly, we need to reassemble it. So we do it in the opposite order. So we put the bolt head assembly into the bolt carrier and it only fits in one way. So twist it and then it will click into place. We then replace the pin, but make sure the firing pin hole is aligned with the center of the shaft. So we just turn that and place that in, so that's aligned centrally. That should hold it in there. Next, we get the handle, the cocking handle. So this is the top of the bolt carrier assembly, so we want the handle to be rotated down. So we push that in. And then we align the large diameter hole. And then we can replace the striker assembly. Push it in. And then to refit the cocking handle, we push down on the striker shroud and then push the handle in. And then that should be flush. Last but by no means least, we need to cock the striker. So we twist that round until it clicks. And that is your bolt assembly ready to be refitted the rifle. To install the bolt assembly, if the stock is set up for right side, you need to press the stop lock button and rotate the stock halfway. You then get your bolt and you place it into the top of the rifle, pressing down on the bolt release catch and then sliding the bolt all the way in to the firearm. And then you can rotate around the stock and lock that into place. And that is the bolt refitted. Now that our rifle's back together, we need to perform a function test just to make sure that the rifle is performing as it should. So first things first, check the rifle's on safe and then check inside the chamber, the body and the magazine to make sure the rifle is clear before we work on it. Also that there are no rounds in your magazine. So to perform the test, we insert the magazine and then pull down on the magazine. That should stay there. Next thing, just shoulder the rifle, bolt forwards. Once the bolt is forward, we drop the magazine and the magazine should release nice and easily. With the rifle still set to safe, look through the sights, squeeze the trigger. Nothing should happen. The safety catch should stop the rifle from firing. Rotate the safety selector to fire position. Press and hold the trigger to the rear. You should hear the striker release. Cycle the bolt. Rotate the safety selector to safe and recheck safe by pressing this trigger. Unlock the bolt and leave the bolt in a rearward position. If the SIG cross fails to complete any of the function checks, do not use the firearm. Take it back to your firearms dealer and get them to check it out. So now you've stripped and assembled your rifle and you've carried out the function checks, it is now safe for you to go and take it to the range. As with all brand new rifles, there is a barrel breaking procedure. And on this rifle, SIG recommends that before you take it to the range, you clean the barrel. You then go to the range, you fire five rounds, 
and then you clean the barrel. And then you do that three times. You then fire three rounds and clean the barrel after each three rounds. You do that three times and then you fire one round, clean it. During your cleaning cycles, I recommend you use something like Bortec Eliminator and Bortec Copper Remover. When you're running the patches through, you want to make sure there are no blue-green tints on any of those patches, and that means that your barrel is pristine clean and you're good to go back to your next cycle of rounds. Insert the first round into the magazine, pushing down so the cartridge slides under the feed lips and push it to the rear. Use the rim of the next round and your finger to push down the round that's in the magazine and then slide that round to the rear. Repeat until the magazine is full. Ensure the safety selector is on safe. Insert your loaded magazine into the receiver. Pull down sharply to make sure that it's locked in place. Push the bolt forward and down so that it's locked in place. Rotate the safety selector to fire. When you have a clear sight picture, take up the first pressure on the trigger, then squeeze the trigger fully to fire the rifle. If you were looking to pick up a SIG Cross, they retail for around about 2,250, but again, the price may vary across the UK. You can pick them up from the Tunnel Target Sports Centre, just go onto their website and they stock the 6.5 Creedmoor. So here are a few of my final thoughts. Um, I actually thought this is a pretty good rifle. I love the size of the rifle. It's nice and light. I really like the folding stock. I think that's, that's really cool. Um, as you can see, it makes it such a short rifle, uh, so you can easily pack this away. Uh, great for hunting or transporting. The ambidextrous safety lever, I think is a fantastic touch, and it's nice having it on a decent sort of hunting or precision rifle too. The adjustable match grade trigger, again, you can adjust that two to four pounds. That's a great feature. I also really like the precision stock. This literally has all the adjustments that you might need to make this rifle fit you perfectly. The barrels on these rifles can be changed with an AR style wrench. Now, if you're not confident or competent enough to do that, I would 100% recommend that you take it to your local firearm dealer and then they can swap the barrels out for you. But it is a multi-caliber receiver and you can literally just swap the barrels out. So you could have a 6.5 Creedmoor, 277 Sig Fury and a 308 barrel. So cons, what do I think they could improve on this? So at the moment, the Sig Cross comes with a zero MOA rail on there uh, as battery standard, as you can see. Um, I honestly think that they should stick a 20 MOA rail on there and that will give you a lot more elevation. Sig currently only make a right hand version of this rifle. For me, that's not a problem, I'm right-handed. However, if there's any left-handed shooters out there, unfortunately, um, this rifle isn't for you unless you wanna shoot it right-handed at the moment. The prototype of the Sig Cross also had a ejection opening cover, like an AR style one. I actually think that would've been pretty cool if they'd left that on there, especially if you're out hunting or if you're out doing precision rifle and the weather is really bad, you can close your dust cover, stops all the dirt and everything getting into your magazine, the chamber and the action. The other thing I think they could have done is along the bottom of the fore end, 
they could have had a built-in arc rail. That would have made it a lot easier for mounting bipods or mounting onto tripods or fitting barricade bag systems. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've certainly enjoyed taking a good look around this rifle and taking it to the range and putting a few shots through it. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to drop a comment below and also please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.